Technology, man. I'm like, oh, for F's sake. Technology, man. This is the best. Really, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is so exciting. This is great for me, too. You uh, see? Jordan from Theater Mania here with the great Dulé Hill and the great Jennifer Mudge, who is trying to figure out how to actually come on this platform. But we are here FaceTiming for now. Uh, they are starring in a reading on Saturday night for play preview of Amiri Baraka's play Dutchman, uh, a play that couldn't have been timelier if it were written now. Uh, and it was, uh, it originated at the Cherry Lane Theater in 1964, uh, and these two wonderful actors starred in a revival of it in 2007. So it's a reunion of sorts. Uh, tell me about your first time encountering this play. I'm, uh, well, for myself, yeah. the first time I encountered the play was, there was actually a fundraiser that they were doing at the Cherry Lane. And they had asked me to, uh, I knew James King, who was over there. And I, so James King and Angelina uh, had, reached, had reached out to me to see if I would come and be a part of the, the fundraiser. They wanted to do the, I guess, the, the monologue from Dutchman yeah. at the end. And I came and I, I did it. Uh, Mr. Baraka was there, Edward Albee oh, was there. Yeah. It's all these phenomenal, you know, giants of theater. Yeah. And they, I mean, they really took to the piece. And then even myself, I really took to the piece because of what he was saying. It resonated with me so much. You know, growing up, I didn't go to like a, like a theater school. I was I was in college for for business finance. Right. So so not all like a lot of the I guess the the certain places weren't really on my radar. But when I finally got hit to this one, I said, oh my gosh, this thing is so powerful, and it was written so long ago, it would be great to do it again. Mm -hmm. And Cherry Lane had thought about doing it again. And when they did, they reached out to me to see if I would if I would be a part of the production. And I said, most definitely. Yeah. And Jenny Mudge, what about you? Um, I first uh, read it in grad school. I was in Providence. And actually, John Douglas Thompson had said to me, you know, you should really do Dutchman. We should do Dutchman. And this is years ago. And I was like, oh my God, this play is amazing. That was like the first time I kind of met the play. Um, and then uh, it was announced that Dulé was doing it at the Cherry Lane. And then I got an audition. And then I went on the audition. And then I had another audition. And then I had another audition. And I got to meet Dulé and Mr. Baraka and Bill Duke, our director. And I just was extremely... Um, convinced that I should get it because <laughs> I, I just wanted to be in that room with those gentlemen. I really did. I mean, I look, was very happy. And I have to tell you, I still, I still remember Jenny's audition. Cause we had, it was a few different actresses who came in. Yeah. And I think came, who even came after her, but from the time she, like she opened up her mouth and she, we did, we did the scene and she finished we, and she walked out. We all just stopped. And looked at each other was like, well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, shit. <laughs> Why are we wasting our time? It was a, yeah. it was like, no, she's it. She was head and shoulders above everybody else. I was really, you know, and look, here's the thing. You know, me coming from the, like the last few years, like most, mostly television and stuff like that. Right. I mean, she blew me away. I was like, oh my gosh, she is such a phenomenal actress. Oh my gosh. And in that moment, I just knew, Dulé, you got to get your, your stuff together because She's about to put her foot in this. <laughs> she, she really, I, I mean, I'm such a fan of Miss Mudge, so you know, I mean, she's just one of the a really phenomenal actresses. <laughs> I remember, I remember sitting there watching it at the Cherry Lane. I guess I was in college at the time. I'm sure I had just read it in, you know, play whatever, play 101, drama 101, or something. Hmm. And I remember sitting there, and I was telling Dulé before that, like, it was the sort of show and the sort of production where you like have to take a walk around the block afterwards, like where you just like need to decompress after. And that's just for me as an audience member. Like, what is it like for you to do this play? This play, can you, well, I guess my first, first part of that question is in your words, can you describe the play for the people that are watching this? Like, just like, a, just like a one line plot. I'm backstage, I think I'm in now. Oh, you're here. You're here. Oh, this is going to be so meta. Oh. Hey, hey, welcome to the party. 
This is, how, this is how we came to the, the project. One, you were first, and then I joined in. This is exactly, it's just like content and form, baby. And I just came here as an eager audience member. <laughs> yes. Um, I think that I always felt like, and, and I know Dulé and I talked about this a lot, like I always felt like it was really like a, um, more of like a, a, a poem in action than a play. Like it always felt to me like poetry in action, like fierce mm -hmm. political, like, cause there is no word wasted. There is nothing that's precious or extra fat or like every sentence. It's, it's like, I mean, I kind of feel this way about Passing Strange, about Stu's book for Passing yeah. Strange. You take any piece of it out and it is as beautiful and important as, you know, just take like take a sentence. So in that way, I mean, I feel like it is something almost more metaphysical than a play. And um, and I know that we both rep not only are who we are in the play, but we represent big things. And I know like the easy thing to say is like, it's a race drama set in 1954 right. America. But Dulé and I were texting at the beginning, you know, we texted a couple months ago about it and Dulé texted me, can you believe this play still speaks to the moment we are in and the exact time we are in? And I was like, I can't, I mean, when we did it, Barack was announcing his run. Like right. he was, Mr. Obama was going to be our president. Like it was a whole, like even, even when I look at like the, the political time that we've lived to this play and kind of blows my mind of, of where our world is and, and, and why certain things will never be resolved until we as a country truly um, repair and reckon things. That's how I feel. I went, that, that was yeah. like, Super long winded. Look, and, uh, you know, and it, I think it speaks to the genius of Mr. Baraka that, you know, that this play can be written in the 60s. When we did it in 2007, it seems so prevalent then in a different way. And even now in 2020, it's even more, it's speaking to exactly where we are t today, talking about the, the, the system that we are in, the, the, uh, the dynamics of the way this country has been built, the certain I guess positions that I guess is expected of us to to the lanes we're expected to be in, and when you step outside of that lane, what happens? I mean, it really is a a play about two people, yeah, a lady and a man who meet who who meet up in the undercurrents of New York City on the subway train, and their interaction ends up leading to uh, disastrous consequences. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the 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 basic the basic high level yeah one line thing of, of what the play is about but it's so much deeper than just two people meeting up on the train it's Correct. who this lady is and who this man is and that underneath the uh the undercurrent of what's happening is it, this is the fact that it's even on the subway that this represents what is happening underneath the surface of what we see it, the society is above this is the world we see but th this is going on underneath and the fact that it's called you know uh dutchman yeah. It's a lot to do with the fact that it's just a continuous cycle. We're seeing a snapshot of this of this train Dutchman that is going around in the undercurrent of our lives, really. Yeah. Was it as actors as human beings, was it hard to do this play night after night for the month or two that you did it? I, I mean I would say for, for me, yes, it definitely was because I mean you have to where you have to go, like oftentimes I think we we push things aside. I think we all have suffered different micro and macro aggressions in our lives where we have to we just put things aside. We suck things up oftentimes to keep on pressing forward. But for this play, you really have to allow yourself to go there to the deepest, most innermost hurts that you have experienced trying to create a space for yourself. Yeah. In order to really bring power and truth to the words, you have to allow yourself to go there. And and as Jen, you know, Jenny was saying, there is no fat in the word. So when you when you start speaking it, it's it's there. You have you have to just let it take you where it wants to take you, and it's costly. So I mean, yeah. I remember we were out. There was a bar in the, <laughs> like right <laughs> around the corner. That was our spot, boy. <laughs> it's a short play. It's not like it's like some long play, but it it, it felt like we did a four hour show. Like you, yeah. do, I think it was literally like forty seven minutes. And when we got out, I was like, we were like hot toddies. Like our throats. Yeah. Remember, we had so many hot toddies that oh, we yeah, did. We were like, like, yes, we're going over next door. Yes. Yeah. See you all in a second. <laughs> and I will say, like, and I, I will say, like, I think that any white woman who thinks that she has an opinion about a lot of the things in this play should play this part and rehearse with these men 
And like, I, I have to say, like, I had an immense privilege of, 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 of a learning and, it, and, it, and I knew I would, but I didn't know, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Right. And, and, and what I got to learn and, and the, the conversations I got to hear and the things I got to, you know, be a fly on the wall of and, and um, participate in was not just a career thing or a art thing. It was like a life thing for me. And, and when I think about that, that time and that, um, space. I'm like, wasn't that like a year? Because it's so much happened, and it was so full. And the show ran like like doing the show with Dule, who is an incredible partner. And like, you know, because it is just the two of us. I mean, we there were other people on stage with us sometimes, but you know, in the eyes of, and and it was such an intimate acting experience. Um, there was so much trust there, and there was so much, you know, what we were talking about and what he was living through and what I was trying to convey. Like we, there was an incredible. Uh, amount of of not just like your partner you always trust your partner on stage but like life trust and um i don't know that's like the best word but it's not even deep enough so it feels like it was such a connection and and every night we got to go on stage and like play this tune that that was i know we were talking about this the other day where it was always like slightly different like we did the lines we definitely did the lines yeah the was there but like but 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 things would like really move and really like go over here that night or go over there the other night and mm -hmm. um, there was a freedom and a, a great freedom and a great trust and and those don't come along every year or decade in your career you know that kind of relationship was it intimidating or empowering to have mr baraka in the room working with you guys like was that like it must have been like a career thrill I would imagine, given his I would, say, I would say it was both. Yeah. It was intimidating and empowering because he uh he was a like he wasn't a tall man, but his right. presence in his energy is he's a giant. Uh and it's like with any playwright, but especially when you know you're dealing with a very uh dynamic piece, you wanna honor you wanna do justice to the playwright. You wanna do justice to the time that they've taken to craft this material. And for him to be there pretty much every night checking it out. It, yeah. <laughs> no, and he wasn't, he wasn't the kind of cat that would that would suffer fools. Yeah. You know, he wasn't that kind of guy that's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. No. <laughs> I will never forget. I, I think I told uh, Jenny this <laughs> the other day. Early on in the run of the of the play, you know, I'm doing it and he finally came, you know, he came early on to see it before he started coming all the time. And I'm finishing the end of the play, end of the play where I'm, I'm coming off now and I figure, okay, like I, I did that. I, I'm, I'm an actor, I did that. <laughs> Mr. Baraka came back and was like, no, <laughs> no, you gotta go deeper. You gotta go deeper. And he started talking me through it. But just the fact that you, like you would, you would think a, a playwright would be a little more like, okay, well, yeah, that was a good job, good job, but let me give you a few notes. He straight was, no. And I, and I know the audience enjoyed it. The audience loved it. The audience appreciated the journey, but his bar was so much higher. So that, and then, of course, like halfway, I think maybe halfway through the run or somewhere, maybe about a, a quarter of the way through the run, he was like, you're getting there, you're getting there. Now let's go deeper, now let's go deeper. And about halfway through the run, he said, now you got it. Now you got it, oh my God, now you got it. And then by the end, he said to me, Dulé, I've never seen anyone play the role to the level that you have. So thank you very, very much. But then, but it's, it's that type of, he was, it was intimidating and empowering because again, he, he, was, an, he's, he was an artist in the truest form. He yeah. wanted to really just challenge you to keep going deeper and further and giving your complete self to the material. So that was empowering and that also was intimidating because you have to keep it has to cost you something. You have to keep leaning into it, leaning into it. He was not going to let you not lean to your fullest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he also, I think that like his like whole life, because he had lived quite into it, even at the point that we met him and, and just being like such a sixties, like no shit revolutionary. Mm -hmm. like, he So he mm -hmm. wasn't gonna be like, yeah, like he wasn't gonna give you the standard. And because theater, you know, he of course redefined theater, but he didn't live in theater all the time. So he wasn't gonna give you any of the normal like 
crap that you sometimes get, which is they think I think we want to hear as actor, you know, they want to be like whatever. And he was just like not he he he, no. he, he wasn't no time for he was just gonna tell you the thing. And it was <laughs> scary and awesome. Yeah, like I still remember that moment though where he came back and was like, no. And it was like straight, no, yeah. no, that's not it. And he was always dressed like he always had like a, hat, like a, like a jacket on. He was always like really well dressed and like mm -hmm. he was a figure. He yes. was. Do you like, hear the that on the stage? He's like, no, that wasn't it. No, go back. No. <laughs> do you hear that? Do you hear that in your head? Like, do you hear his voice in your head doing that to you while you're while you're working on it now? I mean, I I hear. I would say, I hear the echo of leaning in. I hear the echo of challenging yourself to go deeper. I hear the echo of, of not, of opening myself up to the material and letting it take me where it wants to take me instead of trying to hold something back or trying to do what I think in my head it should be or this is good enough because that's more what I hear. I don't hear him necessarily saying that's not it because thankfully by the end of the run he was saying, oh my gosh, you did it. Right. But I, but I do hear the echo of his voice challenging me to always keep leaning in. If you're going to do it, then do it. If you're not going to do it, then put the play down and yeah. go back to, go back to your quarantine. Right. <laughs> There's given, no reason to do it. not do it if you're not going to do it. Given that the mediums are so different, the live, the live in person versus the, you know, the live like this, the live on Zoom. Like what is the rehearsal process like? You I mean, you two obviously have the the decades plus worth of shorthand. And having done the play, you can come into it and be like, all right, we're back here again. It's still like, I have to say, I remembered it being what it was in a way. But then like we were saying every, because every sentence is like, literally you could write a dissertation on every paragraph. Of <laughs> I remember when we went through it the other day we were rehearsing, I was like, oh, did I say this every night? Like I was, I, I was like, we were in a play, like we were, we had gone to another place <laughs> and I think that like, um, it's still going to be amazing on Saturday right, yeah. really in depth. And, um, um, you know, but it, it is, it is, it's, it's, a, and, and I, Julie, I love what you said. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it. And I know that I was being gentle. I feel like I was being gentle and like easing in. I'm like, you can't do that. That's not what, that's not what I did at the audition. That's not right. what I did. Like, it's like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to play on Saturday. I'm going to, we're going to do it. We're going to, you know, so excited. I'm excited. And terrified. Until 2030, we won't do it again for 2030. So right. you know, <laughs> you know, and it's a different. It is a different medium, and I know, like I, I'm kind of learning from, from Jenny in this process because I've not done an online meeting before, and it and it is different because you're you're very aware of, like right. it's like a, a hybrid, really. It's a it's like, yeah, because like, it's not quite TV, thing. right? It doesn't feel quite like a TV thing. It's not TV. It's not a play. Right, but you're aware of the camera. And at the same time, if I'm going to be delivering my lines, I need to look here, even though, you know, Miss Mudge is right here. <laughs> it's a little, I mean, but that's, I mean, it's a little, for lack of better words, like a mind fuck, but, it is. But, thank, but I think as artists, that's what we want to do. We want to keep trying to push the boundaries, keep trying different things, keep trying to merge worlds and seeing what comes out in the midst of, doing these type of things these online readings some new medium or some or some new a new form of brilliance will will come about but it is yeah. it is for me it is a little challenging in the mind yeah, I'm not yeah it's hard because you don't have a part like you don't your partner is like kind of in the box there but then they want you to have your eyes up so you're looking in the you know it's oh. a lot of like weird technical things that you don't do in either medium but i do love i i, I have to say one great thing that has come from all the things people are playing with and experimenting with is an um, an accessibility, both uh, financial and geographic and 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 mm -hmm. Wi-Fi wise that we just have never seen in yeah. theater. And that's one thing I hope that we all carry out of this is that there are people that cannot be reached, you know, that cannot reach where we do theater and that are are craving um, the theatrical experience, which yes is different on Zoom, but still has the feel to it that that people appreciate who can't otherwise see it and, mm -hmm. and that's exciting to me that's an exciting thing to be a part of and that's one of the things i love most about play per view yeah they're like doing these great plays with great 
great actors. And they're charging like, what? It starts at like five, 10 bucks. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Yeah. How and you can, more people can see it than could have seen a run. You know, we're doing, you know, so many of these are off wonder, you know, these wonderful off Broadway theaters, but you do an off Broadway run for, you know, eight months and you can't yeah. have, you know, it it's that same nice. audience. Is, is nice. More people can probably watch this on Saturday at seven, Saturday at seven. Uh, right. That they could have <laughs> plug you to David Gordon. Yeah. I see you with the plug. Yeah. Uh, then they could have, uh, yeah. Eight, more, eight, more people could watch this here than they could have the entire time you guys were actually doing the show at the Cherry Lane. Yeah. Three, nine, see, ble, love that Cherry Lane, the original site of the 1964 Dutchman production as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I miss that theater. I love that theater. I it's love that. It's like one of the most magical places in New York City, I think, that theater. Uh, I want to text every time a friend goes because our poster is on the way to the bathroom. I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say, I love going to that theater because I see you guys on the way to the bathroom. And then in the men's yeah. room, then at the men's room at the Cherry Lane Theater, there's a poster for some show, and I have not been able to figure out what show it is, but the character's name shares the name with of my dad. So, like, it's like there are three photo. it's a triptych of photographs in the men's room at the Cherry Lane Theater. And it's like describing action in a play, and the character that they're referring to has my dad's name. Oh, wow. And it just, every time I go in there, I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about this. What's your dad's first name? Mark. My dad's name is Mark Gordon. So Martin Gordon. Mark. It's yeah. a character. Yeah, and it's a character in some play that they must have done in the seventies, right? It's just like whatever. Anyway, I but I digress. Uh, I want to end on the question of like, how does this play speak to the current world that we're living in? Because just subject line, like just subject matter alone, it it's extremely relevant just to me. Yeah, I mean, I would say that the play is like it speaks directly to where we are today as a society. One, because it's about what is built, what is going on in in the undercurrent of yeah. our world. This is this is something that you have to go beneath the surface to start really getting a deeper look at. Two, it's about trying to fit into a space that is not really made for you. Uh, three, it's what happens when you start stepping out of line of what the society feels you should be and and the repercussions that that comes from that and then uh and i think it's you know uh and the fourth side of it i guess would be really the uh the you see the reaction of people people people's expectations on you of oh you think you think me and you are the same level and when you start to and and, the, and as you start to come into the fullness of yourself and owning your voice what the system around you will do to you for that. Like, you know, you you now are not, you don't know your place type thing. And and I think we're going through that so much, so much today in society. I think a lot of stuff that we're seeing is because people are starting to find their voices. People are starting to speak out and we're starting to see the repercussions of that or the, or the kickback of that or the, you know, uh, the response to that. Not everyone is all hunky-dory and uh, thrilled about, <laughs> about yeah. this fight or this leaning in to equality for all. I think there's a lot of people who are extremely resistant to that, including the system of this country itself. Yeah. Yeah. I will um I fully heartily second all of that. And I would also add that I was talking with um Robert, our director, Robert Barry Fleming, who's amazing and also an old friend and brilliant. And and I remember being approached by uh, this white woman at the Cherry Lane who said, who wanted to um, make an excuse for my character and the way she acts and what she does. She was like, is she on drugs? Is she just unstable? There were a lot of excuses for her that she wanted to make for why a white woman would behave this way towards a black man. And I was like, it's cause it's the way it is. It's cause right. it's, it's cause, of, and, 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 and I find, I, I keep hearing her, I mean, I've heard it for years cause I was like, Wow, she really wanted to find an excuse for why it's okay, and it's like, wow. And I think that that is something that white America needs. We need to examine to to say why is why are always the excuses made, you know, when there are no excuses, when it's in a deep examination and a reparation of behavior. Um, and that's why I think it couldn't be more timely, actually. 
I mean, oh my God, it feels like it was written last night when we were rehearsing. Right. Did yeah. he write this last night at 2 a.m.? Because it, yeah. it couldn't be timelier and I can't, yeah. I need to brace myself before I watch it, but I can't wait to watch it uh, on Saturday. Uh, play per view, Dulé Hill, Jenny Mudge, thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Dutchman, nice Saturday you. at seven. Yeah, you too. See you Saturday at seven. And yeah, <laughs> thank everybody for watching. <laughs> All the best. <laughs>